Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Today we're going to talk about volume of rectangular prisms. Now, this is such an easy, easy topic. All right, I'm not, I have three slides to go over. It's going to be super easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, volume of rectangular prisms is our topic. All right, volume of rectangular prisms. Our essential question, or what I want you to know by the end of this video, is how do you find the volume of a rectangular prism? Okay, volume, simple. So it says a rectangular prism has six faces. All right, we've, we've seen it, we've, we've built them, we use the nets, we know what these things look like. It says any pair of opposite faces can be called the bases of a prism. Okay, so in this particular case, this is a base and this is a base. Or this could be a base and this could be the base. Or the back over here could be the base and the front right here could be the base. All right, so that's what that's saying. And the volume of a rectangular prism, the formula is volume equals length times width times height. Now, that little squiggle right there is a cursive L. Some of you may be familiar with it, some of you may not. And I will write my L's like this in class. So when you see this, this is letting you know that it's representing length. Okay, now the alternative is volume equals capital B. Okay, now capital B represents the area of one of the bases, okay, times the height, which is essentially what you're doing here, because length times width, if I multiply length times width, I get the area of that kind of darker blue square right there. And then if I multiply that times the height, then I get the volume of the rectangle, or the rectangular prism. And that's essentially what we have here for our formula, but a shorter way to write it is capital B, lowercase h. Okay, and it tells you where B represents the area of the prism's base. Okay, B equals L times W, L times W, all right, which is what you have here. So you're substituting this capital B for the lowercase L and lowercase W, all right. So let's look at our first example. It says find the volume of the rectangular prism. Here we have a picture of a prism. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, there we go. I've got a picture of a prism. The width is three meters, the length is two and a quarter meters, and then the height is four and a half meters. Okay, so my formula is volume, we use capital V, equals length times width times height. All right, length times width times height. So I just plug in my numbers. I keep the V and I say three times two and one quarter times four and one half okay and now I just it's a simple matter of multiplying okay so first of all what I want to do is turn both of these fractions into because I'm multiplying these things I have to turn them into improper fractions okay so let's do that first I have I'm gonna keep my V my V and my three all right, improper fraction of two and one quarter is four times two is eight plus one is nine over four. And then improper fraction of four and a half, four times two is eight uh, plus one is nine over two. Okay, now to multiply these, I have to turn the three into a fraction. So I do that by just putting it over a one. And now I can just multiply top times the tops, bottom times the bottoms. All right. So I'm going to take it one step at a time. I'm going to say 3 times 9 is 27. 1 times 4 is 4. And then I'm going to multiply that times 9 over 2. All right. I don't know 27 times 9 off the top of my head. So I'm going to come over here and say 27 times 9. All right. 9 times 7 is 63. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus 6 is 24. So that's going to give me 243 over... 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so now I just need to simplify it. I need to divide 243. Let me erase this part. Hopefully, oops, that's not an eraser. Hopefully I can erase it, and it's not going to let me, of course, because that's how this rolls sometimes. All right, so we'll just leave that there. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. I want to divide 243 by 8. Okay, because that's what that tells me to do right there. So 8 will go into 24 three times. Okay, 3 times 8 is 24. 
I subtract, I get a zero. I bring the three down. Eight will not go into three. So I have a three remainder. So my volume equals 30 and three eighths, since that's an M meters, and we have three dimensions in this. Okay, so it's meters cubed, meters cubed. Okay, let's go to the next example. Here we just have a word problem, but I imagine it's not going to be too terribly different. It says a cereal box is eight and a half inches long. Let me go ahead and highlight this or show you as I read along. The cereal box is eight and a half inches long, three and a half inches wide, and 12 inches high. What is the volume of the box? Okay, so simply enough. I write the formula again, volume equals length times width times height. I plug in my values and I do the math. All right, I'm going to come over here and say volume equals eight and a half times three and a half times 12. Okay, so the same thing applies. I have to take that number, take that number, turn them into improper fractions, and then I can go ahead and multiply. Okay, so volume equals 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17, over 2, times 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, over 2, and then I have 12, and I'm going to put that over 1, because that's what you do to a whole number when you want to turn it into a fraction. Okay, so now I just multiply. First of all, I want to see if I can simplify any of this. I, I didn't do that in the last problem, but you know I might as well try here. So it looks like I can simplify, and I'll just use black, the 2 and the 12. All right, Both of those are divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. All right, And that's going to help me out a little bit when it comes time to combine all these things. All right, So let's get back to multiplying. Multiply all the tops together. 17 times 7 times 6. Matter of fact, I can rewrite this if you want to. 17 times 7 times 6 over 2 times 1 times 1. I know my final answer down here is going to be 2, so that's not too hard. But 17 times 7, I don't really know what that is. Let's see, 17 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. And then I want to multiply that times 6. Okay, 6 times 9 is uh, 54. I hope I'm right. I never can remember that one. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's 714 over 2. So I want to divide that, hope I have enough room here, by 2. 2 will go into 7 uh, 3 times. That would be 6. I subtract. I get a 1. Bring that 1 down. 2 will go into 11. Five times. All right, that gives me a one left over, and then I have 14, and I'm about to get into the picture here, but two will go into 14 seven times. So my final answer is 357, and we're talking about inches, so we say inches squared. I'm not squared, excuse me. Wow, almost messed that up. We say inches, inches, and I can't erase it. All right, so we'll just have to write over inches, not squared, but cubed. Okay, inches cubed, because we're talking about volume. Volume has three dimensions. Okay, that's why we use the cube. It's three dimensions. It's length, it's width, and it's height. Okay, all right, guys, thanks a lot.